What's up, guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com, and I'm here with Omir Santos, former Major League catcher, Coach Andrew Devino, and we're here in Kissimmee, Florida at the Triple Crown Sports Academy. Uh, if you're a baseball player, 8 to 17 years old, looking for a travel baseball team, this is the spot. Uh, we're going to talk today about receiving the baseball as a catcher, right? It's very important to receive that ball well. We can talk about framing. We just talk about everything that these guys, the catchers and coaches who are watching this video need to know to be a better receiver and framer as a catcher. What do you guys got for me? First of all, we've got to catch the ball. I mean, we're a catcher, we're supposed to catch the ball. After that, everything else came in place. You want, you want to be soft, you want to catch strike for strikes, a little bit of the edge, we try to, but balls are balls, strikes are strikes. I see a lot of young guys when they're when they're catching some of these balls outside that are such balls and they try to grab it and pull it across and you're not fooling anyone at that point, right? I think, in my opinion, you're actually making the umpire probably mad yeah. and he's probably going to give you less calls because he thinks you're trying to trick him all the time. So that's a great point. So now what about, I know framing and receiving has a lot to do with the glove and the hand, but what about the body? How does that work? I mean, you got to stay on control and try to not to much too much. Receiving is how you present the pitch. You're not gonna be, if you're moving side to side to get a pitch, it's how you present the pitch. I mean, the less that movement that you have, the best view the umpire is gonna have to call strikes. And there are some umpires that like catchers and they call strikes because they like the catchers. That's when you get the umpire say, oh, the umpire is on your side. So you gotta be quiet back there. And like you said, important, you gotta, Strikes, strikes, balls are balls. Let's talk about the glove. What are we trying to do with the hand? Are we trying to roll it this way? Are we trying to get our thumb underneath? Are we trying to stick it out straight? Are we trying to give a little bit with it? What's the technique on that? First of all, you don't wanna, you don't wanna have that arm really stand. You gotta wanna have it in the point right here, lower target, so when you get the, the lower pitch, um, if you're up and then you have that wrist movement, then the, low, the ball is going to be low, you're going to catch it and then go up again. So we want to have, make sure at low target, relax your wrist when the ball is coming, and the more important thing is beat the ball to the spot. If you can beat the ball to the spot, you're going to get a lot of strikes, a lot of strikes. So another thing is how you present the pitch. If I'm back here as an umpire, you know, they're close to you like this, and then I see this, a lot of movement, getting people, I mean, a lot of people have different teaching way to, to teach that how to, I mean, frame the pitch. My way is, um, and I think it's the right way if I'm, a, I'm an umpire, and I see the, this part of the glove every time, and he's, I mean, I mean pulling the ball like this, and I see in the, this part of the glove, it look like a strike most of the time. If I, I'm framing the ball down, and I'm framing like this, and I didn't see the pitch for a second like the umpire, I'm saying, hey, why the glove is like that? Looks different, looks fishy. Exactly, exactly. It's the way you present the ball to the umpire. And my, my thing is that you can relax the, the wrist a little bit like this, but remember, don't too much because then you're going up to down. And it's gonna be tough to get that low strike, I mean, low ball for a strike most of the time. If you have low target, just relax it a little bit and then you work from the ground up. Turn under the ball, and if you can beat the spot, the ball to the spot, regardless, you're gonna get a lot of strikes. That's a great point, because as a pitcher, I'm trying to throw, especially my type of pitcher, I'm trying to throw low in the zone. I want, I'm throwing balls that are having good depth on it, and I'm trying to make it move. So as a catcher, that's hard, but if you know that, trying to beat the ball to the spot and working through it is a good uh, thing. Also, I see a lot of catchers, at least the ones that I was throwing to, when they get too extended or they try to frame that pitch, when they get long, their arm's like a lever, so when it hits, it does that drop and pull back up. So you can have that uh, same effect being here or too far out. So you gotta find that perfect spot and, and kind of have that, that good framing and receiving. You don't wanna always have that, you don't wanna have that, uh, like you said, that arm stand because, I mean, you have just a little bit of space to, uh, to work. You always wanna have that arm even if you cut the pitch, you don't want to be stand all the way. You always have that a little bit bend in that arm so you can have some movement to work side to side. Because I mean, if you stand, I mean, that pitch is going to be tough. 
So you always have to be, I mean, on, on that, on, on between, so you can move side to side. Let's say you call for a pitch on this part of the plate, and the pitcher gives you a ball that's close to a strike, but it's on this side of the plate. How are you trying to frame that pitch, and what are you trying to do? It all depends. If that pitch take you over this knee that you think you cannot turn anymore, you got to catch it thumb up. You have to, because you don't want to be it's the, the same way. If the umpire see this, it's a ball. Exactly. Even though, even though, even though if you catch it for a strike, exactly. Even though sometimes when you pitch, I think it may be happy you were, you throw a lot of sinkers, power sinkers. So you were outside, outside, and then the catcher call it right in the middle and call for a ball. Mm -hmm. So That's you gotta be, gotta have that knowledge that if you cannot turn anymore, catch it like that, outside of the knee. You sometimes some catcher have more room to work in that side than others. Some someone have to go like this. Someone even can go like this and catch it for a strike. But you gotta be careful with those power sinkers. Yes, exactly. Now what about body wise when you get this pitch? Are you shifting the weight over at all or are you just going on glove? How does that work? Yeah, you you might if you are side, you can shift a, a, a little bit. Shift a little bit because you can practice like that, you can shift side to side, but in reality, you don't have time for that. You only have time for a split second. I mean, you, you can, I mean, a few inches. You just exaggerate, like we were talking about, you can practice like that, so you can have some movement, your hips and everything, but I mean, in real game, there's no way. Chapman is throwing, you know what I mean? You're not gonna have Time to, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, it's too fast. Game exactly. speed, it's too fast to even make that beneficial to you. So you got to be able to catch it with your with your hand. Even though working on it could be good, beneficial to work on the hips, uh, in reality, it's probably not going to happen. Anymore. Exactly, exactly. Gotcha. So in, in low strikes, what, what I like to do, I mean, like we were saying before, I see some people catching the low strikes and bringing it like this. I mean, to me, it's too much movement. If you can, in the low strikes, if you can have the, the, it's better to go up than go down. So if you have that low strike, I like to, I like them to catch it and bring it up as, as it is. Don't know any movement, not, I mean, turning like this, that's some people that teach uh, the wrist. I would like to have the wrist um, as quiet as it can, so they can present the pitch with the umpire seeing this part of this glove. So, because the umpire at some point is gonna lose the ball. If it's down, if the um, some umpires are back, so they're good, that's, they're some good and they're close to the, to the, by the, by the shoulder. But if the, he's far, I'm gonna get a lot of strike from them. From the umpire that is far, because he's not gonna see, he, he only gonna see my, when I present the pitch to him. So, that's a advantage when the umpires are back. And then, I would like to bring not movement, the whole hand. I'm here and bring the pitch, yes, with the whole arm. Not wrist movement or everything. That's what I mean, I, I like to, to teach and I think it's a, lot of, uh, it's a lot of benefit. And if you see best receivers on the big leagues, you can look it up. The best 35 receivers from the last three or four years, they are the same and they all do the same movement. So what is that teaching you? That we gotta follow them. I mean, it's no no way to change the way we we receive the ball. Right. If they're in the they're in the big leagues and they've been there for there for a reason, that that work. So that's the way I would like I like to teach uh, my kids. So we talked about the low pitch. We talked about the pitch that is glove side to the catcher. This pitch to me is pretty probably the easiest one to the to the arm side. What about the pitch up in the zone? How what are you trying to do to work on that one? The pitch I'm up the, up the zone, like we were saying, if you can beat the, the ball to the spot, you're gonna have a lot of success. So if the pitcher is up, and then you can have the, uh, from, let's say from the sheen up, maybe it's gonna be high, it's gonna be a ball. So if you're high, if you're, I got a ball here in the sheen up, and then 
as, as you catching the ball, you already beating the ball to the spot right there, that, that little movement. You don't need catching and drop it all the way to down here. You just need a little bit, half inch, that's it. And you're gonna be caught for a strike. But if you hit the less movement that, the pitch out of the zone, the less movement that you have, you're gonna be more successful. If you have a lot of movement in a ball, it's gonna be a ball. But if you can keep it, even, even I see umpires, he is in the, back here in the outside corner, outside corner for a strike, and they call it here, they throw it here, and they just move it half inches, strike, still ball. But they didn't have, they didn't see too much movement. That's the key, represent the ball and they have the less movement and balls out of the zone. That's a great point. Two things I want to add to that. Catchers, if you think uh, framing or receiving to the zone, meaning not to the middle of the plate, just from the outside to the outside strike, much better because less movement. The second thing I want to talk about as a pitcher, we had a pitch called the six spot, which was a pitch, a ball or two off of the plate. So the catcher would set up. So if this is a strike, he would actually set up a ball or two off of the plate. And a lot of times, if I did my job and hit him in the, in the mitt, we got that call for a strike. Even though it was clearly a ball or two balls off, when you can make the catcher look like he's right there and hit the spot, a lot of times, boom, they're calling that yep. one. So again, it's, it has a lot to do with what the catcher is seeing. And if you can present it in a certain way, you're going to get a lot more calls than if you're trying to trick him all the time. Exactly. And then you, as a catcher, have to uh, pay attention to the umpire behind in the first two innings. If he's calling there, don't do any different. I mean, don't try to trick him because he's already giving, you know, he's already giving you that pitch that is a ball, maybe a half inch. So don't try to trick him and go far. Stay out there and, I mean, left movement, he's going to keep giving you the call. Exactly. So when you were talking before, you said you want to be back, be back here and be quiet and, and present the ball. But talk about when you were playing Major League Baseball as a catcher, were you t talking with the ump, like trying to be friendly with him, trying to uh, communicate with him? How is it? Are they different? How does that work? No, they're not different. They just, like you said, you have to be friendly. I mean, they have some call that you're going to get close call. And then if he miss a call, they, it's going to happen. They're big league umpire, but they miss some calls. I mean, say, you just talk to him friendly. Hey, uh, what do you think? I mean, I thought it was right. And if you give that confidence to them, they're going to ask you, hey, what do you think? And you, you got to be honest. You got to be honest. If you're honest, hey, I think it was a ball. Say, really? OK. And they're going to be they're going to be really appreciated if you do that. Be honest. And then remember, there are cameras everywhere now. And you tell them that was a ball. You're going to have him behind the play again. Say, hey, that was a ball, man. You, you, you lied to me. That's when it's going to be trouble. If you are friendly to them and you are, you got to be uh, um, respectful. Respectful. You got to be respe respectful and then honest. That's the big key, honest. If you're honest, you're going to have a lot of calls. Honest. Honesty and then, and if they messed up, anyway, don't get mad because you're going to have, nine inches with, with him behind you. So, hey, uh, you just get, I mean, don't get me wrong, you're gonna get in, you're not gonna be agree, agree with every, every call, but you gotta take care with respect because you're gonna see him down the road again. Right. So, just, hey, just forget about it, oh, hey, it's, it's good, I mean, I, um, but honesty. That's a great point because I see a lot of young players and even coaches who first bad call, they're all over him. Hey, what are you doing? You're blowing it. Come on, blue, blah, blah, And then for the rest of the game, it's a yelling fest and everyone hates everybody and it just gets way out of control when there's a much more strategic way to get him on your side and give you those close calls because it's a game of inches. I mean, really, we're talking about tiny movements back here that could be called balls or strikes. And if you have this guy on your side, that's definitely a benefit to you. And the better that you are at framing those pitches, you're gonna get more of them. So if you can have those two things, you're gonna get a lot more calls than you would if you were just being a jerk to this guy because yeah. he missed one and you're trying to trick him every pitch. I'm gonna give you a small story. When I came up uh, with the Mets, I was catching, I think it was my third game. And I don't wanna say any name because people know this guy. He's an umpire of short few. If you say something, he, he throw you out. And people that know about baseball know about who, who I'm talking about. I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I was catching, and you know, I mean, I'm new, and then I was trying to, it wasn't that bad. I was trying to frame some pitches, and right away, after my second pitch, he said, hey, hey, uh, rookie, if you want to stay in the game, you better stop that. He got mad, pissed, pissed at me. I went to, back to the dugout, and I, I was talking to my uh, manager and the bench coach, hey, this guy said, no, yeah, he's, he's going to throw you out. So stop that. And then I went back and said, hey, just go back there and talk to him and be honest. And they say, hey, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to do that, whatever. And I went back and then he, he came a friend of, of, of mine. You know, he was, oh, you know, yo, we don't, here we don't do that. You know, you make the umpire look good. And we started having a conversation during the game. And I mean, after that, it was fine. And then I got a, I got a big point from the, my bench coach that that guy used to sing. He have an album out. He said, hey, talk to him about his sons. I mean, the way he's seen and everything, and you will watch everything. And I did that, and I was a game changer. <laughs> it was a game changer completely. He was my friend after that. But I mean, yeah, like you said, I mean, you gotta be honest to them, not try to chum uh, them up because they get pissed. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. What I used to do as a pitcher too, my manager uh, used to write the umpire's names on the lineup card so you can look. So I always made sure to know their names when I went in there um, so that I could just say, hey, what's up, uh, Jerry, or whatever it was. And just that alone, a lot of times the guys go in there, they don't know. They just think, there's the umpire, whatever, you know. So when I started coaching, I would write the, the names of the umpires on the lineup so my guys would know as well. Because I just think, like, the little things like that, uh, especially as a pitcher, because you're, you're seeing so many different guys out there. Catcher, you've got all game to deal with him. I might only be pitching one inning, uh, and, and they rotate all the time. So just knowing the guy's name when you go out there, he, he's going to feel a little bit more comfortable uh, calling your pitches or giving you the, uh, uh, the calls that you want. For example, if a pitcher's close to a balk, you know, maybe he could bang you right away, or maybe he goes, hey, let's uh, come set a little bit longer. Gives you a warning before he bangs you on that balk. So it's the little things just knowing their name and, and trying to be respectful and be honest, like you said. Yeah, when something happened, like a bad call, whatever, it just three minutes, hey, this and that, and after that, forget about it. Don't carry that to the whole game because, like you said, it's going to be a mess. Hey, after that, I mean, you joke around with the three innings later, joke around with the umpire, and then we say, oh, this, is, this guy's a professional, you know what I mean? He didn't, those, those little things that you said. And that's a great point because it's not only the rest of that game, you're going to see him again and again and again and again. So <laughs> you've got to be on yeah. his side for yeah. sure. Now, are there any drills that we can do for framing and receiving? Yes. The one that I like, that everybody likes, uh, is a drill that bare hand with the ball there, and we're going to kind of throw it quick, quick to the, to the catcher, and be soft. I think everybody knows, uh, uh, knows uh, this drill, but uh, it looks simple, but it works. One drill that I like to do with the, um, with the younger kids and even big kids, I like to put this uh, woofer ball on the end of the, the hand, two fingers, to catch the uh, pocket, on the pocket of the glove. And I like to take the heavy ball and catch it with those three fingers. So another drill that I like to do is uh, with the web glove, two fingers, it helps a lot to catch the ball on the right spot. And it's gonna help you too. Uh, it's kind of like an eye coordinator too, uh, with the wet glove. And then we're gonna uh, we go short distance, and then we try to go back, make it tougher. Like we were saying, trying to game like uh, drills. One more, so you can catch it. Another drill that we like to do too is with the machine. If you don't have a machine, I mean, if you have a machine, good. I mean, rack and fire with a small glove, and that's gonna help a lot because it's kinda like, we were talking about game, uh, game speed and game like, I mean, practice with the machine. That, I mean, you can get a lot of done with the machine um, on framing. Another drill that we like to do to work on the pitch down the bottom, we roll the ball like this. See that movement? I just trying to make that movement the whole arm, not not doing like this, 
run the ball and then catch it and flip it. That's something I'm trying to work on that thing. On the game, we used to, like we were saying, try to exaggerate. So it com the game comes and we try to do the same movement. So, and you got to throw that ball a little bit firm in the ground ball. I like to do another drill, bounce it in front of the uh, catcher. You want to be soft. You don't want to hyperextend your elbow working too far through the ball because then you're not going to have any flexibility to catch. And you want to be silent in, in your body. Also, uh, the, uh, I like to have, I mean, do another drill, work on the bottom of the zone with heavy balls, trying to throw in a um, kind of in a fly ball loop it and then catch it uh, um, on the bottom of the zone and pull him up for a strike. Just a Sadway stuff. Those were some awesome drills. The heavy ball low in the zone, I've never seen that one before. That one's awesome. I like that a lot. Really works on, you know, helping you. Because if you get a pitch, a really fast pitch at the low end, bottom of the zone, it feels heavy. So that's kind of uh, making you work on things like that. That's great. And also the one I never saw was the rolling one down at the bottom of the zone. Two really great drills I've never seen before. So thank you for teaching me that. I'm going to be stealing those drills from you guys. Um, but also, those are great because catchers who can get the low pitch are, the, in my opinion, the best catchers. Because yes. that's the hardest one to work on as a catcher or yes. to get called, in my opinion, speaking as a pitcher who knows nothing about catching. Also, these smaller gloves, you use the Valley uh, catcher's glove and the mini web glove. Um, you know, training small is a great way to really work on that hand-eye coordination and just get better. If you can do it with a small glove, you're going to be, the theory is you should be able to do it better with the bigger glove, right? Yes. That's great. Thank you so much, guys. That was a great video. Great tips. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to check out the links down below, uh, omirsantosbaseballcamps.com, as well as Triple Crown Sports Academy, if you guys are in the Central Florida area. They have travel teams 8 to 17 years old. Come by, train in the facility. Uh, Coach Andrew does some lessons here. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them down below, and we will talk more there. Hey, guys, I want to ask for your help with something. Uh, Triple Crown Sports Academy, Omir Santos, his wife, Coach Andrew, a few other organizations, they got together, and they were collecting some used baseball equipment. And recently they took all that equipment down to the Dominican Republic and handed it out to players who really needed it. He was telling me there was over 200 kids there. Some of those guys were down there fielding with uh, bare hands, fielding balls, using broken bats and equipment. So it was really a great experience for them to go down there and, and just see the benefit that these kids got from getting some of this equipment. Um, and he said it was a real positive experience and they plan to do it again. And that's what I'm reaching out to you for is to see if you guys have any used baseball equipment now i'm going to be going through my house and my garage and seeing some of the stuff that i got i know i've got a bunch there and i want to uh bring that as well um and if you guys are interested in helping with their cause their initiative and you have some old stuff laying around i'm going to leave a uh an address down below uh you could ship your stuff right to that address I'll make sure the right people get it. These guys are planning to go back to the Dominican Republic, Colombia, possibly some uh, places here in the United States. Um, you know, they, their plan, just because of the success of it the first time, is to keep doing this. And, you know, Omir is one of the most generous people that I've come across in the game of baseball and just in life in general. And I just think it's a really great thing that he's doing. Um, and I want to support it. And, you know, having this community, you guys here on YouTube, I just wanted to reach out and see if, if anyone uh, would like to do that as well. So thank you uh, always for the support here on YouTube with me. And if you do have some equipment, we would be very grateful and thankful to you if you sent it in. Thank you so much, guys. I'll talk to you soon.